Hi, this is Rob Kelly, and this is yet another PowerPoint video. This particular video is going to talk about the effects of desire for control in relation to locus of control, in relation to a person's locus of control, and whether they tend to process and attribute experiences in their life to either internal or external sources. So if you imagine a person in a difficult, uncomfortable or challenging situation, the person with an internal locus of control, particularly someone who's got a high secondary control, that's a high sense of control uh, or management over their emotions, over their emotional reactions, is likely to think, I can tolerate this, I can tolerate this, I can build the skills and resources I need to overcome situations like this, I can deal with this, I know I know I've overcome things like this before, I know I can deal with this, I know I can overcome it. The person with an external locus of control, in particular one with low secondary control, thinks to themselves, I can't cope with this, I can't deal with this. How can I escape from this? How can I get away? What can I do to avoid this situation? So initially there you've got a completely different reaction from someone who thinks internally and someone who thinks externally to a challenging or uncomfortable situation. The next step then, the person with an internal locus thinks to themselves that they feel calm, they feel in control. Uh, he or she feels able to put effort in. They believe they've got the skills and abilities to deal with this situation. Therefore, it's not stressful. Uh, it doesn't create anxiety. I can put up with this, I can deal with this. Yeah, I can do this, I've, I've got the skills to get past this. So it's quite a calm, thoughtful, contemplative reaction to the situation. The person with an external locus feels quite anxious. He or she puts every effort into avoiding escaping, or if they've got to face it, over-controlling the situation. They're over-controlling it. They don't believe they could survive this situation. They don't believe they could tolerate this situation, whether it's a fear of flying, eating peanuts, a fear of being sick, a phobia of dogs, having a row with your partner, any situation at all, they don't believe they can deal with it or tolerate it or put up with it or live through it. So they have to do something to avoid or escape it. For the internal person, this leads to an increased sense of internality. The person feels more powerful and capable Again, they've got through a situation by using their brain, by using their skills and resources. Any initial anxiety at the beginning of the event has been overcome. They feel confident and assured about their skills and resources. The external person strengthens the idea that they don't have the adequate skills and resources to deal with situations. Their anxiety is reinforced. They try even harder to avoid difficult or intolerable situations. So these two different reactions are entirely different. At the very beginning, the person or either person can be equally stressed or anxious about the event. For example, getting on an aeroplane when people know the weather's bad. The internal person can feel as anxious as the external person. But the internal person processes their ability to resolve how they know they're reacting to this flight in a calm, relaxed, positive and confident way. With the external person who feels skill less in relation to how they're going to react to this flight, because of course they believe the flight itself is what's going to be having the effect upon them, feels powerless, they feel they can't tolerate it, and all the while they're creating even more anxiety about the situation. What happens then is the person who thinks internally reinforces their sense of internality. They feel even stronger. They've uh, just reminded themselves that they have got skills, they have got resources. They've just reminded themselves that when they think things through, they can calm themselves down. They do have a sense of self-efficacy. Life is predictable. Hurdles are um, jumpable. Hurdles are uh, overcomable. And they've got the skills and resources when they put their mind to it to overcome anything they come across. The external person, completely the opposite. They're reinforcing their sense 
that life is unpredictable. They're reinforcing their belief that life is uncontrollable and that frightening and scary things happen and that bad things happen and, and that fate intervenes in situations and means bad things happen and awful things happen. And actually, all the time this is going on, they're making themselves more anxious. If you think about it, some of the most external people we help, for example, the metaphobes, are some of the most controlling people we help. And even though they have almost complete control over their lives in terms of exposing themselves to metaphobia, they're also the most stressed and anxious people we deal with and the most neurotic people we deal with and the lowest self-esteem people deal with and that the people with the highest social anxiety to do with. So even though they are completely, in most cases, avoiding the very situation that frightens them, they are still creating a tremendous amount of anxiety and stress and pain, if you would, about the event or situation. That's because in order to escape to run away, to over-control a situation, you have to think about it in a very, very stressful, anxiety-provoking way. Oh my God, I can't get on that plane, it's frightening. I can't, I can't fly there, I can't fly to America, I can't do that, I can't face that, I can't, I can't possibly live with that, I can't possibly tolerate that. Or a very anxiety-provoking thoughts, very stressful thoughts. I can deal with this, I can get over this, I can get around this, aren't stressful thoughts at all. If you look at the diagram in front of you now, you can even relate something like compulsions or compulsive behaviour to desire for control. If you think about it, any of the compulsive behaviours that we've looked at over the years and any of the compulsive behaviours that we're asked to help with as trainers, as consultants, what is a compulsive behaviour? A compulsive behaviour is a, a behaviour that a person commits in an attempt to get out or get away from something that they're feeling at that particular time. So even whether someone compulsively eats, or whether someone compulsively drinks, whether someone compulsively has sex, or takes drugs, or gambles, they're doing that in order to get away from a feeling. To get away from a feeling that they're currently going through, they're, they're currently experiencing which is intolerable to them in some way shape or form that they have to do this thing to get away from that in order to feel better so even a compulsion in this respect is about desire for control more specifically you could in fact think of desire for control specifically as a method of compensating for low secondary control so low secondary control, of course, secondary control is almost always entirely about emotions. You could almost substitute the words secondary control for emotions. So high secondary control, when someone's internal, this is a person that has control over their emotions. They don't score highly on all the unhelpful thinking styles questionnaires. They don't think catastrophically. They don't brood about things. They don't think in black and white ways. They've got good control over their emotional responses. Low secondary control for people with an external locus, they don't have good control over their emotions. Their emotions run wild with them in certain situations. So compulsive behaviors or compulsive thinking really in this respect is about a strong desire for control. I've got to get away from this feeling. I've got to feel better. doesn't matter what I do, but I've got to feel better now. Regardless of the consequences of drinking, of having sex, of sleeping around, of taking drugs, of spending money, of gambling, whatever, regardless of the consequences, I want to feel better now. That, of course, is entirely about running away, escaping, from a feeling that the person believes is intolerable and getting to a better place. So in that respect, it is um, desire for control in the most primitive form. Getting away from an intolerable feeling and escaping to something better. The more a person does that, the more external and powerless they become. The more a person tolerates difficult situations, 
and builds up skills and resources to deal with these situations, the more internal they become. And the more they do this, the further they go down that continuum of internality or externality.